The men are joining us on Body Language. I'm so excited to have this conversation because so often when, when we talk about bodies and even that body positivity movement or body neutrality or whatever we're calling it these days, I find guys get shortchanged in that conversation. So let's just kind of start with how each of you feel about being a guy in a bigger body in 2021. I've had a long body positive journey myself learning to accept who I am, learning to accept my body, uh, to stay healthy and still be big and healthy at the same time. So usually I feel way better about my body these days than before. But I think a lot of us are going through uh, pandemic fatigue. I know me, I'm a huge emotional eater. Um, so I have been eating like very ravenously, um, just to try to soothe myself as much as humanly possible. I know as a big guy for like a body positive journey, especially since it took me such a long time to come to terms with my weight and my size. And now I find myself kind of slipping back into like some diet culture stuff to feeling like I need to be smaller because I have gained weight. So it's been an interesting road. It's not just the girls that are feeling that. It's everybody. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know just before COVID, I was making regular uh, visits to the gym, hitting it, trying to eat well, getting out of that and spending a lot more time with a smaller group of people uh, has been harder because exactly what you said, you fall into some habits, maybe they're old or I know definitely with me that I've dealt with for a long time. Health is one of them and trying to balance the being bigger and being healthy has been a huge struggle for me. Like I really wanted to start off my journey in COVID by being more active than usual just because I had more free time. Um, but I found myself getting a little bit lost and not really knowing what to do. I think I got to a phase where I was just like a little bit down on myself. I'm the largest I've ever been but how do I still show myself some love? I can't tell you. I'm really, I'm already <laughs> starting to get emotional. And I think people watching this will, will be feeling what I'm feeling, which I just, I do not hear men speak this way about their bodies. What was it like growing up, Zach? What, what, what was it like as a kid? When you grow up with a larger body, especially like in your adolescence, Bigger guys in general come into an adult body way before they come into like an adult brain. I remember in middle school, all of the kids start finding their romantic side and, and trying to be physical with each other for the first time. And I remember seeing like, you know, boys and girls like sitting on each other's laps and playing with each other. And I just remember as another seventh grader, but I was already, you know, 230 pounds over six feet tall. I was like, I can't do that. These are... 48 pound like 11 year olds with me i can't do the things the other kids are doing i can't be part of things the other kids are doing and you start to kind of look for that like where you can insert value especially being the big guy a lot of us go to sports you always have a constant search for where you fit in and belong i think everyone struggles for where they belong in the world it's part of growing up but i think uh straight sized people don't realize uh, the, the intensity of the struggle of a larger sized person when you are so physically different than your peers. Yeah, you feel other. You just yeah. feel that otherness. I definitely was on the bigger side as a kid. Uh, taller and bigger, always the biggest person in my class. And, you know, I lost myself, Zach, as you said, you go to sports. I lost myself in sports. Mm -hmm. And excelled at sports. I know losing weight as a preteen and a teenager was something that happened to me consciously when I was 10, uh, 11 years old. And I probably lost about 30 pounds. When you lost weight, was it communicated to you in some way, shape, or form that this was all the time? Thing? All the time, especially through my family. Oh, you're not the chubby boy anymore. It was almost a loving shame. Mm -hmm. And the language was that, oh, hey, you're better now. Hmm. You're smaller, right. yeah. you're better now. Yeah, and that and, gets communicated to you and it's, as a 10-year-old. That stays with yeah, you. Yeah, and that was my takeaway. I'm in therapy now for it. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I come from a South Asian background, and at a young age, people from the jump will 
make a comment about your weight. That's so rude, but <laughs> why is the first comment that's coming out of your mouth not, how's your day going? Is, wow, you've gotten so fat. I just found it to be kind of depressing. And I had actually did start focusing on trying to lose weight. When I was in middle school, I started to follow diet culture and diet trends. And it got to a point where I actually started starving myself. I um, actually lost over 100 pounds within a year in high school because of that. And uh, it was a really dark place for me. But of course, everyone was celebrating it. Everyone was talking about how beautiful I looked, how amazing I looked. And um, it, it really was a place where I was just like, you know what, like, maybe this is what's best for me. And this is what people think is beautiful. So let me try to follow those standards. You sort of mentioned some disordered eating there. Has anyone else experienced that? I remember doing the cabbage soup diet at 11 years old. When I was, um, it was middle school, so probably like, yeah, 12, 13 years old, I started um, buying every weight loss pill I could find. When you are bigger, you, you get so much praise and so much admiration for losing weight that you kind of get into a thing where you start craving it. And it's kind of the only way you start feeling value. But as again, as, as a man, it's never spoken of. So all of you are public facing people uh, on social media, in the modeling world, in the chef space. How have you gone from, from what you're just describing to really being examples of doing it anyway, showing up anyway? I don't think I've done it yet. I think I'm still in the process. I think I'm still going through it because I still struggle with that culture. I think I'm in an industry. I never trust a skinny cook. It's always, always a struggle for me to find balance between food, which is my best friend, my career, my life. Um, and also at times my worst enemy. I've had a couple shows, one on Food Network, on daytime talk shows here. And, um, you know, there have been times when I've had producers uh, say to me, you're too big for TV. They don't want you. They love the idea, they love your personality, but you're too fat for TV. I've had it said right to my face. And Zach, I mean, you've made huge waves in the modeling industry, the all caps fashion industry. You know, I remember when you were signed to IMG and for those not in fashion, I mean, that's considered the premier fashion agency. So what's, what's that been like to, to be defining even the term brawn in the fashion world? For me, it started off very much a uh, fake it till you make it sort of thing. I very much started preaching body positivity before I ever believed in it. My big thing was finding out how much money people were making off of making me feel bad about myself. <laughs> <laughs> and like the yeah. whole diet industry, most of the fitness industry, like the whole fashion industry. And, and, and luckily we've seen this big swing, especially in fashion and entertainment, where we had social media, the silent group of people who didn't feel good about their bodies was no longer silent. Say, and I know you work a lot in the online space. I, I personally started off out of space where influencers weren't really a thing either. Um, and I was actually straight sized and I was putting on weight at that time. And I felt so insecure about my body. And I, I, I didn't know how to really let anyone know besides the social media space. So for me, it was really about sharing my journey about learning to love myself again and not feeling like I needed to go back to those old habits that I had when I was in high school um, and really just maintaining that and showcasing to everyone else that, you know what, like you can go through a rough patch, you can go through a lot of different changes in your body, but you can still love yourself regardless. One of the things I'm noticing with, with all of you, and it's certainly my experience as a plus woman in the entertainment space and in the online space and in the fashion space, a little bit in the chef space, right, Rod? We did have that show. A little, bit. A little a chef. Bit. <laughs> uh, is that that journey that we're all on, it does not go like this. And so many times people sort of look to me like, oh, you're confident. Like, yeah, but not three hours ago. Somehow I've just been able to quiet those voices that are not helpful, that do not speak the truth and sort of show up and do it anyway. So is that, is that something that exists in the male brain as well? This isn't linear? 
Oh, absolutely. I made the huge mistake of earlier last year, I downloaded a uh, weight loss app, which was goes against everything I've believed in. And I still did it because I was like, I want to help other people, but this doesn't apply to me. I still need to do this thing, but other people can love themselves. And then, you know, you catch yourself in that uh, horrible thinking. Body positivity is not a cure. It's a, it's a practice. One of the first things I noticed was I started to post a whole lot less. Um, and it got to a point where I almost did like maybe 40 posts in the entire year. I think a big part of it was also feeling a little bit insecure because I know every time I posted, people were like, wow, you look bigger. And it, it was starting to come in and people did start to notice. And I was just like, oh my God, like, can you leave me alone? A lot of people think that big people just don't care about themselves. I was like, I guarantee you, I focus on my health and my diet a hundred percent more than you do. I could not not ask you this question because it's stuff that I get asked all the time. And I don't always have the answer because I am not a larger man. Where the heck do you shop? Well, I'm going to plug for a second. If you need swimwear, uh, I have Miko's, which is a swimwear line that I started with full hey. beauty brands available through King Size. Uh, King Size is also a great um, uh, big and tall supplier. Mr. Big and Tall and George Richards in Canada do a, a great job. Wide the brand is amazing. Yeah, wide. Opening. I love them. One Bone is incredible. Another awesome Canadian company. The biggest struggle with being a bigger guy is size ranges are so inconsistent and you might be able to, if you're a 3X, you can shop here. But if you're a 4X, that's like the cutoff. Like you can't shop here anymore. Say it. I know we've talked about ASOS before. That is that's a vibe for you. Although they're not always, they don't always go all the way with their ranges. I totally agree with you. And also recently they, they actually did get rid of a few sizes. They used to go up to like a 6XL consistently. Um, but I think now more consistently they're going to a 4XL. Mm -hmm. And then they have a few pieces in 5 and 6. Um, and also they're UK sizes, so you really do have to size up on top of that. And then another great option for men, especially when it comes to suiting, is Indochino. I love Indochino because it is made to measure. Uh, you can just go into a store, they'll measure your body, and you'll actually have like the perfect suit for your body type. Rod, any fashion tips? I mean, I think these, I think these two fashion giants kind of summed it up. I recently have sort of as you know, Meredith, having you as a stylist has made my life way more simple when it comes to that. I did my first online purchasing. I tried O Navy 3XL and 75% of the clothes uh, came back too, too small. It actually crushed me a little bit. It did. I was, was there, actually, but I said, you know what, babe, it's okay. You're a stretch 3X. Yeah. Right. Whatever that is. I, but, you know, I, but that's where I am. I know certain brands. I'm like, if it's stretchy, I could throw an XL, one X on. If it's a hard pant, yeah. I need to go two X. Like you start yeah. to learn the material has something to do with how something fits you, obviously. But yeah, so Rod, you're a stretch three X at Old Navy. It's all good. Right, but my best advice to any guys shopping is you need to buy a body tape measure and you need to measure, you know, waist, chest, and you need to really equate yourself where when you're checking out under the size, every website will say size guide or something like that. You need to click on and see what measurements their, their things are. Can each of you just say something that you are, um, you know, if we've got, if we've got a guy tuned in right now, that's just really struggling with, with being who he is out in the world, the size he is, is there anything, any advice you can give? You're not alone in this. My struggles with weight, made me the man I am today. And I'm lucky to like who I am today. Since the community is out there, reach out. And there's no shame in that. I guarantee if you reach out, I'm gonna say, hey, this is what it is. This is what I went through and I'm there with you. Just reinforcing self-affirmation, changing the narrative behind being larger. You need to tell yourself that you're beautiful and you have to look in the mirror and really truly mean it. And even if you do it every single day, every morning, I always find that to be more empowering and just helps me go through the day and feel even better about myself. And I think that's how you build up that confidence as well. This is a change making conversation you just all had. I appreciate it so much. Well, thank you. This has been fun. And yeah. and, thank, and Rodney and Syed, it's always a pleasure. Did you want me to get started on some lunch for you down here? Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah just start. Ready for lunch? <laughs>